It's like all of the Avengers all of a sudden come together as one. They've moved past all the issues that Captain America had with a lot of the moral, morally gray obligations with what they were doing, and they've become this team once again that... I know, that's not a really bad example. I wish I knew more about the Avengers. On NGMI every week, I try to share an actionable, insightful, deeply profound experience of my own and turn it into a lesson. These are real things that we're facing every week. And one thing that I haven't really talked all that much about is your car's extended warranty. Building the greatest team in the world. You see, when you're an entrepreneur, it often feels like everything falls on your shoulders. But when you build a really great team to then help build your business with you, you begin to be able to focus on what you're good at. But not every team starts out great. There are problems that come along the way. Once you start working with someone, you really find out a lot about them that you might not have wanted to know before. Like Austin and his disgusting love for cryptocurrency. You see, teams go through stages of development. We don't just meet one another one day and then all of a sudden turn into the Avengers. How do you know if what you're doing is actually creating the team that you dream of? Your dream team, if you will. <laughs> just thought of that. In the 1960s, there was this guy, he might still be around, I don't know, I haven't looked it up. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, Bruce Tuckman. He came up with this theory of team development and it's, it's been stuck in my head for literally years. And I cannot think of anything else sometimes when I'm thinking about my team because it's such a good and insightful theory. You see, Tuckman basically said that, hey, Teams develop in a curve. There are five stages that they go through over time before they're fully a fantastic functioning team. The five stages of team development are called forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning or ending. You know, just nice little words. Ing, a lot of ing words. So what do each of these stages mean? And what do they feel like? And why are they important to understand? Let's dive into each one and talk about it. When you form a team, there's a lot of newness to the situation. Some people might be feeling anxiety, but overall there's a lot of positive expectations that the team you're joining or being a part of is going to be great. People are gonna be asking lots of questions about each other. They're learning about one another and what makes the other person a good fit for this team. They're learning how to be with one another as people working together on a similar problem. And for that reason, when you're in the forming stage, it's a critical moment to provide the structure and direction that a team needs to get off on the right foot. You see, if we hired our employee, which by the way, name reveal, his name is Blake. If we hired Blake to come in and work on our team and we just said, all right, kid, here's the QuickBooks account, get started. Well, that would be absolutely terrible because he would jump in and just not know what to do, what we're about, or why we're doing the things that we're doing. Instead, in order to form a team correctly, we need clear directions and goals established so that that team knows what they're working towards. But typically in the forming stage, we don't see people instantly start working together at a high capacity. And thus, we start to get to the second stage, storming. As you can imagine, this stage is full of headbutting and sometimes conflict and sometimes it can get a little uncomfortable. As a team, if you start off together and you just clash in personality or you simply have too many constraints on what you're able to do, it feels like it's impossible to move forward. Sometimes we don't love the people that we work around. It creates this tension that all of a sudden really makes it hard to achieve the goals at large. You see, in storming, people are 
figuring out and flexing the boundaries of the position that they're in now. They're working towards their goals, but they're still figuring out the constraints or the issues that they encounter along the way. When teams start to storm, we have to understand exactly what's going into their frustration. Why are they feeling this way? And then what can we do to get them out of it? How can we break down our tasks or our goals in order to help them achieve what they're looking for? If I told Blake and Austin, hey, we're gonna be the number one payroll company in the world, and then we only focus on bookkeeping, well, that doesn't make much sense. We're not really going the right direction in the first place. We need to have a clear goal that makes sense to everyone involved so that everyone is bought in and knows the direction that we're going and they can clearly see that their work is impacting our goal progress. Communication is really, really key to understanding exactly what the other person is thinking, what our expectations are, and how we're going to get there together. Which brings us to our next stage, norming. It sounds like my uncle, Norm, Norman, sounds like normcore dad jeans, beige loungewear. Sounds like normcore dad jeans, beige loungewear. I'm norming. Picture me norming it up in the streets. Norming is just reaching a common ground with your team members. It's the indication that your team is finally starting to understand one another. They're breaking out of that storming phase where they were trying to you know, rip each other's throats out, but now they actually like working with each other or they at least know how to productively work with one another. And this is where things start to kind of click. You feel like everything is making sense and new team members are able to more effectively accomplish their goal because they can communicate better with the team members around them. It's like when Tony Stark finally figured out how to make his Iron Man suit fly. All of a sudden we see our path forward, everything's clear and we know that we can make it with this team that we have established. And that leads us to our final phase performing. This is the best feeling stage in any kind of team development. When you have a fully formed team that has been through all of this time together, they have been through hard times where they express their feelings, they've been heard, and they know how to work with one another, it becomes a productivity machine. This is what all of those business people on LinkedIn and TikTok are trying to get at. They're trying to help you understand what a performing team looks like. They are fully bought in, team members are running on all cylinders, and everybody knows exactly what they need to do to get to the goal. We see this stage a lot in films. It's like the climax of all the action. In Moneyball, when Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill finally get everyone together on the A's and they see their theory start working and it just crushes everyone else. It's the Avengers fully assembled fighting Thanos with all of their friends coming in from the background. Just totally taking over the goal that they're all trying to accomplish. It's the best feeling that we get when we work on an effective team because we know that with that team, we can do anything. We can face any challenge and overcome it. And finally, that brings us to the end. The ending, when teams end, it's time for them to move on. And this happens in small businesses too. And I imagine eventually it'll happen in our team. Ending is often very bittersweet because you've built wonderful relationships with the team that you have. And it's hard to see people go, but in the end, you know that it's right and it's time to move on to the next thing. Every small business is built with teams and they're the foundation, the backbone of the business that you're building. It's with these teams that you can finally reach the goals that you're trying to achieve. By building an effective team, you can actually take your business to the next level. Once you understand the basics of team development, it's really hard to not see where your personal team is at. And then you can understand how to better serve them in the stage that they're in. For example, right now, our team is shifting from norming to performing. We've identified areas in which we can improve. We're starting to communicate a lot better and our engines are starting to fire on all cylinders, helping us eventually grow into a bigger business. Because really the best productivity hack, the best business hack that you're ever going to find is just building the right team.
Want to know the greatest team in the world? Austin, Blake, Captain America, Tony Stark, my uncle, Joshua Weissman, Brad Pitt, Bruce Tuckman, QuickBooks, Jonah Hill, Thanos, Dream Team.